Namaste and a very, very good evening to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to create a bar chart using Python. Even before I proceed to demonstrate how to create a bar chart using Python, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Let's begin by talking the talking about the data set that I'll be using for today's analysis. This is the very popular Iris data set. As you can see here, there are six columns. The first is the flower ID. The second variable is sepal length. Then you have sepal width, petal length, and petal width. These four variables, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, correspond to the flower characteristics. Lastly, you have the species variable. The species of flower can be either setosa, versicolor, or virginica. Let me show you the sample size in this particular data set. When I go to the last record, you have 150 records. So which means that in this data set, we have a sample size of 150 records. Let me apply a filter here and show you the three categories of species. The first category of flowers that we have would be setosa. The second category of flowers would be versicolor. And lastly, you have the virginica species of flower. Now, I will be going to Python, wherein we can execute a few codes to create a bar chart. As you can clearly see here, right now, I am in Jupyter Notebook. We will see how easily we can create a bar chart using Python. The first thing that we need to do is to import the libraries. I will be importing two libraries. The first library is the Seaborn library. Second one is matplotlib.pyplot. So we'll be working on Seaborn and matplotlib.pyplot. Now, why do I need the Seaborn library? Seaborn library has a lot of inbuilt data sets and we will be loading the iris data set from the Seaborn library. In the next line, as you can see here, I've written the code to load the data set. There's a very simple command called as load underscore data set. And within parenthesis, you can specify the name of the data set within double quotes. What this does is it will load the data set and save it as an object called as iris. Let me go ahead and execute this particular command. What you will see here would be the representation of the first five records of the iris data set. You have sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and species. This is the same data set which you were seeing in Excel earlier. Let me now scroll down. Here, we are running the group by command. We will be grouping the iris data set by species. Remember, species is the only categorical variable that we have. Once we are able to group the entire data set by the species variable, then we will be calculating the mean value for each feature for each species. You can see here, the code that I am executing here is iris.groupby. Within parenthesis, you can specify the only categorical variable that we have, namely species. Then you can calculate the mean value for each feature with respect to species. We'll save this as an object iris underscore mean. Let's now go ahead and execute iris underscore mean. As you can see here, along the column, you have the four important variables, namely sepal length, sepal width, then you have petal length, followed by petal width. And along the row, 
you have the three species of flower. The first would be setosa, then you have versicolor, and lastly, you have vojnika. Each of the values that you see here would be the mean value for that particular variable and that particular flower. When you look at setosa species, the mean sepal length is 5.006. Similarly, when you look at the versicolor species, the mean sepal length is 5.93. Finally, when you look at virginica, the mean sepal length is 6.588. The same argument holds good for the rest of the variables as well. Each number that you see here is the mean value. What can we infer when we look at each of these values? Let's look at the first variable, namely sepal length. The least value is 5.006 and the highest value is 6.5. This simply means that out of the three species of flower, virginica has the highest sepal length. Then when you look at sepal width, the largest number here is 3.4, which simply means that setosa flowers are the ones which have the highest sepal width. The lowest sepal width belongs to versicolor. Then we can make a move on to petal length. We have 1.4, 4.2 and 5.5. The largest value of petal length that we have is for virginica. Similarly, when you look at petal width as a characteristic, the largest value is for virginica. This clearly means that for the virginica species, the petal length and petal width is the highest. Is there an easier way of looking at this particular table? When we ask this question, the only answer that comes to mind is yes, by using graphs. So we are going to summarize the table by simple bar graph. Let me scroll down. You can see here, this is the code. We'll be running a bar chart for the mean sepal length for each species on IRIS dataset. The command here is pretty simple. We have to specify sns.barplot. Within parenthesis, we have to specify the X variable, which is species, and the Y variable, which is sepal length. The data will not be the raw data, but it will be the iris underscore mean data. You can see here, when I scroll up, in the last step, we have created the iris underscore mean data. Let me scroll down. So I was explaining the sns.barplot command. Let's now look at the second line here. As the name itself suggests, we are specifying the title. What is the title? The title here would be mean sepal length for each species in the iris dataset. In the third line, what we are specifying is the X label. The X axis will be labeled as species. What about the Y label? The Y label will be the mean sepal length. Finally, we can use the plot.showOf command to display the bar chart. So remember, these are the first, these are the five lines of code that you need to type. sns.barplot. This is the code which will execute the bar plot. Then you have to specify the title. Third line is about specifying the X axis label followed by the Y axis label. And then we can run plot.showOf. Control enter. You can see here, this is the graph for the mean, my apologies. Yes, this is the graph for the mean sepal length for each species in the iris data set. What do we observe in this graph? In the x-axis, what you see is setosa, versicolor, and virginica. Clearly, the longest bar here is for virginica. 
which clearly means that Vojnika flowers are the ones which have the highest mean sepal length. Setosa flowers are the ones which have the least mean sepal length. In fact, the average sepal length for setosa flowers would be 5 and the average sepal length for Virginica would be higher than 6. Let's now look at the second bar chart. The code here will remain the same except for the fact that you have to change the y-axis variable. The second variable that we'll be looking at would be sepal width. Let's try and understand this particular bar graph. Here, we have an interesting contrast. What is the contrast? In the x-axis, anyway, we have the three categories of flower. In the y-axis, we are looking at the mean sepal width. Now, setosa flowers are the ones which have the highest sepal width. Compare this with the earlier graph that we had. When you look at the sepal length, virginica flowers is the one which had the highest sepal length. Setosa flowers are the ones which have the lowest sepal length. When I scroll down, we see that the highest sepal width is for setosa flowers. Let's now look at the third bar chart. In this bar chart, we are looking at the mean petal length for each species. This is a very, very interesting chart because the differences are quite striking. The lowest value of petal length is for the species, namely setosa. So setosa flowers are the ones which have the lowest value of the average petal length. When you look at Virginica flowers, Virginica flowers are the ones which have the highest mean petal length. Now, let's look at the last variable, namely petal width. Let me scroll down. You have the three categories of flower. Here again, the lowest mean petal width is for setosa. So setosa flowers are the ones which have the lowest mean petal width. Virginica flowers are the ones which have the highest mean petal width. So when you are looking at petal as a characteristic, may it be the petal length or petal width, it is the Virginica flowers which have the highest value. You can clear, clearly see and compare the two graphs. Similarly, when you look at setosa flowers, setosa flowers are the ones which have the lowest petal width as well as the lowest petal length. So this is how you can create simple bar chart as part of EDA or exploratory data analysis when you are building any machine learning model. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. In today's video, we've seen how easily we can build a bar chart using Python. I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Thank you very much for watching this particular video. Have a great day ahead.